So hello everyone. So this is our fourth lecture in the series of complex lectures from unit four. So the fourth unit is basically covering the internal circuits of all the gate, all those gates which is named as logic families. And the second part of unit four is programmable logic devices in which we are designing some complex circuits using some programmable devices. And this lecture is covering two of those programmable devices, namely ROM and TLA. Okay. So these are the contents. What are programmable logic devices? Introduction. TLDs means programmable logic devices, and then ROM as a programmable logic device and PLA as a programmable logic device. ROM we are very much aware that it will be read only memory, and PLA will be programmable logic. array okay so let's start so in recent times ssi and msi ssi means small scale integration and msi means medium scale integration circuits are replaced by more versatile programmable logic devices so instead of using some ic's or components loose components to design some logic functions or to design some system systems so we are opting for programmable logic devices so what are these programmable logic devices which are available to us these are ROM, PLA, which we have already deabbreviated, read only memory, programmable logic array, and PL is programmable array logic, and CPL is complex programmable logic devices, FPGA is field programmable gate array. So, out of those, these five devices, we are going to cover these two programmable logic devices in this lecture. So, let's start with ROM. So, ROM stands for read only memory. And whenever there will be some is a memory, that means there will be some addresses and there will be some data on those addresses. That means if we take an analogy that there are streets in a colony and in those streets there are houses and in those houses there are some people living in that. That means the capacity has to be of a house. How many people can live in that house? That means here that there will be addresses, there will be houses and on those addresses, how many bits can be stored, okay. So that becomes the data capacity of a single location of, the, of that memory. So if we consider a lane as a memory and in that one house is one address, one location and on the, that location, how many bits can be stored, that is the data capacity and the number of data lines, it will be equal to the number of data that can be the number of bits that can be shown on that particular location. So, and address lines and if let's suppose if there are 10 houses, how we are going to decode which address I am talking about right now. So, there will be some address lines on which if I place the data, then I will be reaching a particular address. Like in case of multiplexer, we have seen that if we place some particular value on the select line, then one of the input was selected and that selected input was under consideration to reach the output. Similarly here, in case of a ROM or any programmable logic device, we will be discussing first the address on which address we are going to reach and on that address what data I am going to place. So it consists of k input lines and n output lines. So these output lines are actually the data lines and these input lines are actually the address lines. Here, yeah, it is also mentioned input lines are referred as ad address lines and output lines are referred as data lines. So, if there are k address lines, that means if there is a k bit addressing capacity, then how many unique addresses can be there? 2 is to power k. For example, if we are having 3 bits, then how many different combinations of 3 bits can be there? From 0, 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, that means 8, that means 2 raised to power 3, that means 8 addresses can be there. Okay. So, if there are k address line, then there are 2 raised to power k words in the room. By saying that there are 2 raised to power k words in the room, then we are saying that there are 2 raised to power k locations where data can be placed. Okay. Room can be viewed as a combination circuit with AND gates connected as decoder and number of OR gates equal to the number of outputs. That means we can say that the to design any combination circuit, we need not as basic gates 
not and and or using three gate, using these three gates any complex digital circuits can be designed using these three gates only okay so the and part of this circuit is not flexible in case of in case of rom because these and gates are not available to you directly these are available to you as part of the decoder so if you are aware of the decoder then decoder outputs are actually the and gate outputs so if i am saying that my decoder will be having eight outputs that means there are fixed eight and gates inside the decoder that cannot be changed so i am going to use that decoder for the and part okay and already you can see that the node is also available in the decoder so the node and and part is at this in the decoder itself and to add those products i will be requiring or gate that or part is flexible okay in case of rom that or part is flexible the number of or gates uh, uh, you want can be as per your requirement the uh, requirement of system which we are you going to design so if you are going to design a full adder okay full adder means there will be two outputs sum and carry so there will be two or gates which will be connected at the decoder's output okay so that means there is a flexibility if the now same if i am going to design a comparator which will be having three outputs greater less and equal then the same decoder can be having three or gates at its output that means that or part is flexible with me but i cannot change the internal part of the decoder that means and part is fixed okay so now what is the structure of the rom how they how, how i am saying that there are addresses and on the, on that address there are some bits which are stored so let's see this is the general rom which is having these k address lines 0 to k minus 1 that means k address lines are there that means inside these there are 2 raised to power k if we start from 0 to 2 raised to power k minus 1 that means these are 2 raised to power k which are which is mentioned at 2 raised to power k words in the rom that means 2 raised to power k locations so this is my first location this is my second this is my second location and this is my 2 raised to power kth location and on these locations there can be some data okay and that data is referred as words that means those words this binding data is referred as word so these words will be equivalent to my how many words are going to be there that means there will be some outputs which will be deciding how many words are going to be at that particular location so all words all the locations will be having the same number of data okay same number of data means same number not the same data same number of bits okay that means each location will be having eight bits let's say and out of those eight bits some might be one some might be zero and depending on that that will be the unique part of it which output is requiring how many zeros and how many ones okay when we'll be going to the designing part we will be very much clear about that so let's proceed further and going into the further details of this rom you can see that there is a rom okay there is a rom which is having these k address lines and data lines decoder part the same thing and this this thing now all these things inside these these are there are some or gates which i have said that these or gates are now flexible okay these or gates are now flexible that means i can choose any number of or gates with any number of inputs that means if i need three inputs to be added three things to be added then i can prepare three input or gate by enabling this one this one and this one that means three things can be added if i need two input or gate that means i need to only add two things then i will enable this one i will close this circuit i will close this circuit that means these two can be added and if i make it open then that means this third gate will not participate okay so by that we mean that number of or gates and or part can be made flexible okay and this is again the theory part of it when we'll be reaching the practical aspect when we'll be designing a particular system or a circuit we'll be very much clear about it and for the sake of information and there might be question in two marks that what are the different types of rom so these are the different types of rom prom m prom e prom e e prom prom means programmable read only memory m prom means mask programmable read only memory that means whatever programming that could have been done to that rom is already done at the manufacturer side okay 
that means no more further programming can be done to that rom it could have been programmed once and that programming is done by the manufacturer so the user which you or me cannot change the data can further program the rom so this is mass programmability only when m prom then e prom e prom means that means the data that has been written on the rom is erasable now that i can on depending on my requirement i can erase that data and write new data and last one e e prom e square prom electrically erasable that means now that erasing mechanism is deciding the type of prom so this erasing mechanism can be either in form of ultraviolet rays i can use ultraviolet rays to erase the data or i can supply electrical current to erase the data so e square prom means i am erasing the data electrically by supplying electrical current okay so that is e square prom namely so this is the basic of prom now let's proceed to the designing part of prom okay so this is the basic view how a programmed rom look likes so in this there are five address lines that means five address lines which i have also mentioned as address lines are also known as input lines five address lines or five input lines that means the system is having five inputs and these inputs are labeled as a0 a1 a2 a3 a4 you can name anything a b c d e okay so these can be the five inputs and for those five inputs what will be the size of decoder decoder with five inputs will be 5 cross 32 decoder okay because the output of decoder can be 2 raised to the power 5 for five inputs the output can be 2 raised to the power 5 similarly if this would have been a three input decoder then the decoder size would have been 3 cross 8 because the number of inputs are fixed three and for those three inputs the maximum number of and gates that can be accommodated inside a decoder are 2 raised to the power n for n inputs the output of decoder are 2 raised to the power n that we have called in unit 2 already okay so for five inputs decoder will be 5 cross 32 this 32 this 2 raised to the power 5 where this 5 is this number of inputs only okay so there are 32 outputs from 0 to 31 and then i have mentioned that there can be num any number of or gates as per your requirement so let's suppose my system is demanding that i need eight outputs so i have connected eight out eight or gates and what are the things which are going to be added with the help of that or gate that i have already told you that these are the things which are going to be added that means here four things are going to be added so this or gate is acting like a four input or similarly you can check here there are three things to be added so this one is acting like a three input or gate okay similarly you can check any one so here you can see 1 2 3 4 5 so this one is acting like a five input or gate that means if you have generated the products then you can add these products in any fashion in any pattern by using these or gates okay so this or part is flexible that means if we can write that in a rom the and part is fixed why it is fixed because it is inside the decoder those and gates these 32 outputs are actually the output of 32 and gates which are already fixed inside the decoder i cannot change that but the, these number of or gates are externally connected that is in my control that means the or part the or part is programmable okay again this is a already programmed rom now we'll program our rom as per my requirement so i am provided with a question design a combination circuit using a rom that accepts a two bit number and generates an output binary number equal to the square of the input number that means this is if i am asked to prepare the circuit forget about rom this is a question from unit 2 only 
but in unit 2 this rome word was not used the only difference is that so if i'm asked to prepare a two bit squarer circuit then how i am going to proceed so let's suppose a and b are the two inputs and the squared output let's suppose it is denoted by p q r and s so 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. these could be the possible input combinations the square of 0 it is 0 square of 1 is 1 square of 2 1 0 is 4 and 4 is written in binary as 0 1 0 0 square of 3 1 1 square of 3 is 9 9 in binary is written as 1 0 0 1 so this is the truth table derive the truth table we have derived it find the minimum size of rom what rom size is going to be required so first of all i need to identify the decoder okay if i identify the decoder i can e easily see that for two inputs my num in the number of inputs in the decoder that means number of input lines or number of address lines is equal to 2 so the decoder size will definitely be 2 cross 2 raised to power 2 so the size of decoder this is not the rom size this is decoder size decoder size will be 2 cross 4 this 4 is actually 2 raised to power 2 okay so 2 cross 4 decoder i am going to require so let's see i am using a 2 cross 4 decoder inputs are a and b outputs are these four 0 1 2 3 you have to be very much clear that these four outputs 0 1 2 3 are not pqrs these pqrs are not the decoder outputs pqrs are the outputs of the or gates or the final outputs which is as per the circuit requirement because these 0 1 2 3 are nothing but the and outputs only okay the products which are required to be generated so we can see that for p i require only one of the inputs okay one of the inputs which is this corresponding to a b third term so if i write the index 0 1 2 3 the decimal value of these corresponding inputs that means for p only 3 is required so this 3 is required so this can be p okay similarly for q only this one is required so this can be this 2 that means this 2 can be the q okay similarly r you can see that for r nothing is required that means this r can be a ground connection and for s okay for s 1 and 3 are required that means this is 1 and this is 3 and both will enter an or gate to produce s 1 and 3 are required because this 1 and 3 part is flexible with me for these p and q for these p and q i could have also used or gates but in those or gates only one input would have been there so i have opted not to use them otherwise i can also use or gates here as well that means i am saying that i can use an or gate here as well and put a cross here but that is optional because only one of the inputs is required so you can draw the black part as well it will also be correct but without that part it is also correct because there are there are no two things which are to be added okay so this is the circuit designing using rom so this is the complete rom which is having four outputs and two inputs so the minimum rom size which will be required will be 2 raised to power 2 okay 2 raised to power 2 and finally outputs are 4 2 raised to power 2 cross 4 rom so this is the rom size requirement
okay now let's design another question so i am provided that there are a system is to be designed which is having three outputs f1 f2 f3 so this is a b c d a bar b bar c bar d bar from this i will be requiring mean terms like here in this case i saw that where are these outputs this is 1 this is 3 so i connected 1 and 3 1 and 3 1 and 3 inside a or way so i am not interested in the boolean expressions i will be converting those boolean expressions into the mean term index so so this is a already canonical form so i can simply convert it into index as all four are without bar that means 1 1 1 1 here i can see all four are with bars so 0 0 0 0 so this can be written as summation of 0 and 15 okay similarly this thing needs to be converted so let's convert it as so a plus b if i multiply it a into a bar and a into a bar is 0 a into b bar a b bar a into c a c then b into a bar a bar b then a bar b is there then b into b bar is 0 b into c is b c okay so again but this is not the canonical form i need to multiply this ab bar this ab bar into c plus c bar into d plus d bar similarly for this ac i will be performing multiplication with b plus b bar into d plus d bar similarly for this ab bar a bar b I will be multiplying with c plus c bar into d plus d bar. For this b c, I will be requiring a plus a bar into d plus d bar. And after performing all this and replacing this one and zeros, after preparing the canonical form, I can find that for this f two, for f two. i will find the momentums like for here 0 and 15 were obtained in that case i will be obtaining the momentums as 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 14 and 15 okay this you can do on your own similarly this third one is already provided with momentums that means 13 and 15 are the momentums So the for first one zero and fifteen are the momentum. Third one three and five are the oh sorry thirteen and fifteen are the momentum. And for F two we have calculated that these are the momentum four five six seven eight nine ten eleven and fourteen fifteen. So how we are going to design that? So from this I can see that there are four inputs. So what will be the decoder size? A decoder with four inputs. So if inputs are four, output of decoders will be. 2 raised to the power 4, 16. That means decoder size will be 4 cross 16. So let's take a 4 cross 16 decoder. Okay. 4 cross 16 decoder. So inputs are these four, which are A, B, C, and D. 16 outputs are there. 0, 1, 2, 3. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Okay. So this is a decoder which is being chosen, and then I have to. Produce three outputs, so I am drawing three vertical lines, where I will be connecting my OR gates. This will be my F one, this will be F two, and this will be F three. Okay. So for F one, I need zero and fifteen. So zero and fifteen. So this is zero, 
and this is 15 or f2 f or f2 4 5 6 7 so this is 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 and last two are 14 and 15 14 and 15 okay and for last one 13 and 15 don't care are you can either use them or drop them so i'm dropping them you can also use them but it will not going to it is not going to affect the overall complexity of the circuit so 13 15 so 13 this is 13 and this is 15 okay so this is the complete system using this rom so examiner what is the minimum size of the rom so minimum size of the rom which is coming out from here is 2 raised to power 4 which is the decoder size only that means 2 raised to power 4 combination it is indicating that there will be 4 inputs and 2 raised to power 4 addresses and on each address there are how many possibilities 2 raised to power 4 cross 3 that means 3 are the outputs okay so this is the circuit realization using ROM so now let's proceed to the next programmable logic device PLA programmable logic array so in ROM we had seen that and array in simple terms we had said that and part and part is fixed because why it was fixed because it was part of the decoder we cannot go inside the decoder so we cannot change the circuit similarly the programmable part was the OR array the number of OR gates that are required that is flexible I can have any number of OR gates as per my requirement and as we have seen the, in the previous case f1 f2 f3 three outputs were there so i connected three or gates if there would have been four outputs five outputs i would have used four four or gates five or gates as per my requirement so the programmable or array that means or part is programmable number of or gates is also decided by me and the number of inputs which will be entering the or gate is also decided by the programmer or the user similarly pla next next programmable logic device programmable logic array it is saying that and array is also programmable or array is also programmable that means now there are no fixed number of and gates you decide how many and gates you are requiring for your particular problem you decide you decide how many or gates you will be requiring for a particular problem that means there is no decoder present here and part will be decided by the user or part will also be decided by the user how many inputs will be entering the and gate it will also be decided by the user how many OR gates, how many inputs will be entering the OR gate, also decided by the user. That means everything is programmable. Okay. So that means AND array, which is programmable, that means number of AND gates will be decided by the user. Similarly, OR array is also programmable. That means finally, the number of outputs will be also flexible. As per your requirement, you can have any number of OR gates. So AND array, that means there will be, let's suppose if there are P AND gates, because we are saying we are generating products here and generates products so for p and gates we will be having 2 into p okay 2p why 2p because before entering the and gate i will double my input in form of complement and non complemented form so if i am having three inputs a b c i will prepare a bar b bar c bar as well so there are six things which will be available for the AND gate. So, AND gates are P only, but the inputs to the AND gate can be twice because A can also be there, A bar can also be there, B can also be there, B bar can also be there, similarly C and C bar can also be there. So, there are six possibilities which are available for the AND inputs. And if there are, let us suppose M OR gates, okay, so 2P into M. So, 2P into M will be the number of programmable links in the OR AND array. So, there will be 2P into M programmable links in the AND array. And after this OR array, I can decide how many things are to be added in the OR part. Then I can decide how many links are going to be in the OR array. So, we will be deciding that 
we will be designing some circuit and will be very much comfortable in that. So, this is the general structure of a PLA which is having three inputs A, B and C. So, as I have told you before going to the AND part, I will first double the inputs. How I, how I am doubling the inputs? By preparing A bar, B bar and C bar. So, instead of using a normal node connection in unit 2, we have seen that we were using if this was A and this thing was preparing, this is A and this is A bar. So, instead of using this pattern, I am using this pattern. So, if I place a A here, then from the top part with a bubble, I am getting A bar and from the bottom part directly, I am getting A. Okay. So, three inputs are represented A, B, C and I am preparing A bar, A, B bar, B, C bar, C from this arrangement. So, this, so these three inputs become six inputs, one, two, three, four, five, six. And if there are four AND gates, so there are two raised to power, if the number of inputs are three. So, two into three, six into my number of AND gates. That means that many links can be there in the AND array. Okay. And once the AND outputs are available, so four AND gates will be producing four outputs, four products are there. These are randomly written products and when we will be solving the question, we will be preparing the products as per I, my application or the provided question provided by the examiner. Okay. So, these are the four products. So, if we check that in the first output, these two products are required which are to be added and in second case, there are three products which are required to be added. So, this is acting like a two input or and this is acting like a three input or and the best part is that pro programming flexibility does not end here till the OR part. Some more programmability can be included by these XOR gates. How? You can see that the output of these OR gates are fed to the inputs of XOR gate in which one of the input is getting controlled by 0 or 1. So, we are very much aware that in an XOR gate, if one of the input is fixed, let's suppose this is, let's suppose I denote this as x. So, if x is fixed and I make this 0, I know that my output will be x and if I make this 0 to 1, then this x will change to x bar. That means, I can generate the complemented output as well by using this XOR gate. So, in case I need x, then I will be then I will use this 0 in the XOR gate input and if I need X bar, then I will use 1 for the XOR gate input. Again, we will, when we will be solving the question, it will be clear. So, now let us solve the question. <coughs> so, implement the following function using 3 input, 3 product terms and 2 output PLA. So, the it is mentioned to me that you can only use three inputs, three product terms and two outputs. So, the question which is provided to me is, I am having these two functions, f1 is this and f2 is equal to this. So, 457357. So, 457, when I feed them in a k map, I got the expression. So, I think k map is need not to be explained here. 0, 1, 3, 2, 4, 5, 7, 6. So, you can check that 4, 5, 7. So, 4, 5, 7. These are the three main terms. So, these are the same groupings. So, you can check here A is common from this part, D bar is common. So, A, B bar. From here, A is common. From here, C is common. So, that is why A, C. So, A, B bar plus A, C. Similarly, solving the another thing now. 3, 5, 7. So, this is 3, this is 5, and this is 7. So, there are two pairs again for which the answer is AC plus BC. So, for AC plus BC, you can check now, there are four products, AB bar plus AC, AC plus BC. So, the thing is, I am asked to design using three product terms only, but I am having four products. So, how I am going to accommodate these four products with three only, but I can see that this AC is common 
AC is common in F1 and AC is common in F2 as well. So that means this AC product can be used twice for both the outputs. That means I can easily use three products, three AND gates to generate these products and use them as per my requirement. When we can, I, I can see that this AC, this product will be used twice. Okay. So let's proceed further. We have done that only. Then preparing the programming table. We have seen that there are three unique products, AB bar, AC and BC. First product, second product, third product. AB bar means A is 1, B is 0, C is not there. AC means A is 1, C is 1, C is not there. BC means B is 1, C is 1. And for the first function, I need first product and second product. For the second function, I need second product and the third product. That means 1 plus 1, this 1 plus 1 is indicating that I need these two products. And these two ones are indicating I need these two products. Okay, so this is the programming function. And both are used in true form. That means I am not going to complement any of these. So both are true. If I require any of them in complemented form, then I would have placed this C here. Okay. Then preparing the circuit. So A, B, C. So let's quickly design the circuit. C. Then using three AND gates. First AND gate is AB bar. So this is A, this is B bar. Then second one is AC, this is A and this is C. And then third one is BC, this is B, this is C. So this is the AND part. Now I am having two outputs, F1 and F2. So I will be requiring two OR gates. Okay. The first OR gate, F1, is requiring first two products. So first two products. Similarly, this F2 is having two inputs. That means the last two products. That means AC is used twice. And both we have seen that both are in true form. If these are in true form, then both these inputs, if I use them as 0 or 1, then I can see that both, are, both will be connected to 0. Here also 0 and here also 0. Sorry, I have connected it on 1. So this is also going to be 0. Both these inputs are going to be 0. So this will be F1 and this will be F2. So in this way, we can design any circuit using PLA, in which we have seen that this AND part is also programmable. This OR part is also programmable. And there is some additional programmability with help of true complement programmability also available. So thank you very much. In last complex lecture series, we will be covering the I analog to digital or digital to analog converters from unit 2. Thank you.